Hello and welcome to this webinar for year 11. We are focusing on grammar and grammar for opinion writing. There are three key learning aims and three things that I hope that you will take away by the end of this session. The first one is understanding main clauses and compound sentences. The second one is forming complex sentences. And then the last one is looking at complex compound sentences. So this is for a specific and particular writing assignment for opinion writing for paper two. So the opinion writing task is zoos are cruel. Animals should be allowed to roam wild and free instead of being cooped up and used for public exhibition. Write a speech as part of a debate for or against this statement. So obviously it's opinion writing so you need to give your views. Your views may well be for the statement that zoos really are cruel, animals should have their liberty and that they shouldn't just be exhibits or you might be against that zoos are not cruel, animals are free and we should be able to see animals because that's a a positive thing. But the focus for this webinar isn't really about opinion writing, it's to do with technical accuracy. Now, technical accuracy is a really important part of opinion writing, because in the mark scheme, which you may be familiar with, the assessment objectives are about technical accuracy, or I call VSPAG. So the V is vocabulary, the first S is spelling, sentences, punctuation and grammar. 40% of the mark is for VSPAG. So you could gain 16 marks out of the 40 marks for your opinion writing piece. 40% on VSPAG. But the focus for this particular seminar is really on sentences and looking at appropriate sentence forms for effect. So let's start thinking about main clauses and simple sentences and compound sentences. Now, if you remember that a simple sentence has one main clause, it has a subject and it has a verb. So for example, zoos destroy animals' rights to roam free. That's a simple sentence. It's a good sentence for an opinion piece because it's very clear that you're passionately against zoos and you feel that they're really detrimental. They destroy animals' liberty. It's a really clear, simple sentence. Another one here, zoos care about profit, not animals. Again, you've got the subject, which is the zoos. The verb this time isn't destroy, it's care. They care about profit, not animals. Very clear, simple sentence. And then the third one, zoos do not protect newborn animals. That's really tugging at the heartstrings, using an emotive idea about newborn anim animals being unprotected. So all of these simple sentences are really effective. They're absolutely fine for opinion writing. However, some students, the majority of their work is in simple sentences. So we have to make sure that we don't just write one clause. We want to write more than one clause. We want to write multi-clause sentences. So another sentence that instead of a simple sentence is a compound sentence. Now these ones have a subject and a verb, but then they are connected with another subject and verb. So that means that you're extending and developing your idea appropriately. So you've got two main clauses, two main ideas that are connected appropriately. So for example, the connectives are co coordinating conjunctions. So another way of remembering them is fanboys. So they're for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Zoos destroy animals' right to roam free and this lack of freedom is appalling. So I've connected my simple sentence appropriately with another main clause. I've created a compound sentence, which is a really good sentence for opinion writing because I've, because I've not just talk, talked about them um, destroying freedom, but I've also said this is appalling. Again, using this emotive language to really stir up this sense of disgust and outrage. Zoos, zoos, they care about profit, not animals, yet 
the general public are still fascinated with animals as exhibits. So I've connected these two ideas that zoos are used for profit and people don't care. So it's again, this sense of outrage, this compound sentence. Zoos do not protect newborn animals, nor do they help young animals to develop into maturity. I'm connecting these ideas appropriately, talking about baby animals, but also talking about young animals. So it's not just about when they're born, but how they develop and mature. So you can see by using compound sentences, you're linking ideas effectively together by using coordinating conjunctions. So you're using fanboys for and nor but or yet and so. So let's look at some of these simple sentences. How could we change them into compound sentences using fanboys? So zoos, we're, we're taking the other side now. The other, the other three were very negative. And so we're looking at the positive side. We're trying to have a balanced view here. Let's say that you want to say zoos are large and spacious. How could you add another main clause to create a compound, compound sentence to link ideas appropriately? What about this one? Zoos help children to love nature. It's a really nice, simple sentence, but how could we extend it to add an appropriate clause to develop our ideas? Zoos breed endangered species. So again, it's about the positives of zoos. They're spacious, they help children love nature, they breed endangered species. But how could we extend this sentence to connect it with another main clause to develop our ideas? Well, here are some examples of how we could do that using fanboys. Zoos are large and spacious, and there are many regulations about dangerous animal overcrowding. So you're linking this idea say, saying zoos are spacious and actually, Animals are protected from overcrowding. They're not claustrophobic. They're not um, cramped spaces because there are laws in, in place to help animals. So linking two connected ideas to try and make a nice compound sentence, linking the ideas that are relevant. Zoos help children to love nature so that they can look after our planet. So you're using that coordinating conjunction, so, Children love nature, they'll become environmentally aware, our planet will be a better place because of zoos, connecting these relevant ideas. Zoos not only breed dangerous, endangered species, but they also manage reintegrating these species back into the wild. So using that co coordinating conjunction, but you're linking relevant ideas. So zoos have breeding programs and they have reintegration programs. So they don't just breed those endangered species, but they reintegrate them back into the wild. So those are some positive aspects of zoos. Now let's talk about different types of multi-clause sentences. For our second learning aim, it's looking at complex sentences. So we know that main clauses have a subject and a verb, and they can stand on their own. But complex sentences have a main clause and a subordinate clause or a dependent clause. They are integrated. They can't stand on their own. They need each other to make full sense. So, for example, when it comes to protecting the physical and psychological welfare of animals, zoos do more harm than good. So you can say, see the main clause. Zoos do more harm than good. That can stand on its own, but you have this dependent or integrated part. When it comes to protecting the physical and psychological welfare of animals, that's a subordinate clause. And you can see there that a subordinate clause can come at the beginning of the sentence. So as well as using simple sentences and compound sentences for your opinion writing, you can use complex sentences like this one, talking about how zoos do more harm than good. Let's try and keep balanced. So let's think about a positive aspect of zoos. I am sure that we have all seen wonderful zoo creatures that fascinated us as children. So that's about fascination and intrigue and this love of nature being created by zoos, something you could write in your opinion writing. 
And this is a complex sentence. You can see that the, the part, the dependent or subordinate clause that fascinated us as children is integrated. It can't stand alone. It needs the other part to make full sense. I'm sure that we've all seen wonderful zoo creatures. That's the main clause. That's the main completed thought, but the additional clause is integrated into it. The third example here is about polar bears. Polar bears are proud predators, pred predators of vast frozen wastelands, reduced to pounding claustrophobic enclosures. So here, this is a negative point about zoos forcing large animals into tiny spaces. You can see here the part in green, reduced to pounding claustrophobic enclosures, is a de dependent clause or a, a subordinate clause. It needs the other main part to make full sense. Polar bears are proud pred predators of vast frozen wastelands. That's the main clause. That's a complete idea that could stand on its own, but the subordinate clause adds to it, adds more information. It integrates ideas that are more complex. So how do we form complex sentences? Well, the ones that I've used perhaps help you to see that you can form complex sentences using subordinate conjunctions. So words like when, before, after, whilst, because are subordinate, subordinating conjunctions and they can help us to form complex sentences. How else can we form them? We can use relative conjunctions. Words like which, who, that. Again, we can extend the thought and integrate ideas so that we extend and integrate our argument. We develop our argument through complex sentences. And we can do that through the relative conjunctions like who, which, and that. We can also use participle verbs, participle verb. So these are ing verbs, present participles, ed verbs, past participles. And you can see the one that I, I used, reduced to pounding claustrophobic. Um, enclosures, that's a participle verb at the beginning of that subordinate clause. So we want to form complex sentences. So we can use subordinate and subordinating conjunctions like although, as, before, because, before, even though, once, if, since, until, when, whereas, whilst, to add to our main clause, to extend and integrate ideas in a sentence to make our opinion much more forceful, interesting and developed. We can add relative conjunctions, that, when, where, which, who, they're relative clauses that add and build to our argument. And we can add participle clauses. So I've got some example like realizing, realizing that going to a zoo was the worst thing I could do. I stopped taking my children, fearing, deciding, celebrating some other ING um, participles or ED participle, past participles, worried, concerned, amazed, astonished by the range of animals at the zoo I told my friends to go and visit. So something like that would be a complex sentence that's positive in favour of zoos. So I wonder if we could add subordinate clauses participle clauses, relative clauses to some of these simple sentences to form complex sentences. Zoos are cruel. So that's a simple sentence. Could we, how could we add a subordinate clause or a participle clause or um, a, a, a relative clause to that to extend and integrate ideas? Zoos help animals. How could we make that into a complex sentence, I wonder? Zoos do not give animals freedom. Zoos are not perfect. I wonder how we could make those to extend them into multi-clause sentences, complex sentences, by adding those subordinate clauses, which are relative, subordinate, or participle. Well, perhaps we could do something like this. Zoos are cruel because they deprive many animals of long life. So thinking about short life expectancy. And as I've said, I said earlier, because it's um, a subordinate clause, we could put that at the beginning. Because they deprive many animals of long life, zoos are cruel. So we can change the order to add interest for our writing. 
Zoos help animals when species are endangered in the wild. We're adding that when, that, that relative clause. When species are endangered, endangered in the wild, zoos help animals. So we switch it around because it's a subordinate clause. We can put it at the beginning to make our complex sentence more interesting. Zoos do not give animals freedom, which means that animals become prison inmates rather than natural beauties. So which means you can develop that, extend that with the emotive idea that they're prison inmates, that metaphor, rather than natural beauties, you're adding some contrast into that sentence, extending it, integrating ideas, making a complex sentence. Realizing that zoos are not perfect, many executives have made vital changes to enclosures across the globe. So you start that complex sentence with a participle, realizing an ING participle, realizing that zoos aren't perfect. Many executives have made vital, vital changes. So you're saying that zoos aren't perfect, but they're developing, they're modernizing, they're improving. So that's for the positive or the, the pro zoos argument. Okay, let's think about our final part of this session. We're thinking about compound complex sentences or complex compound sentences, whichever you want to have them round. Compound complex sentences are formed of two main clauses. So they've got a coordinating conjunction as well as at least one subordinate clause. That means they have three clauses. So they are multi-clause sentences that have three clauses. So you can change the order as long as the sentence makes sense. So they need a main clause, they need um, a coordinating conjunction, they need another main clause, and they need a subordinate clause. It might be subordinating conjunctions that are used, it might be relative conjunctions that are used, it might be participle verbs that are used to form that subordinate clause, but that's what they need. Let's have a look at some compound complex sentences. So you can see here that there are three clauses. Zoos foster a healthy respect for the natural world, and they also develop a love of wildlife which will promote a passion for conservation in the next generation. You're using the full range. What about this one? Children not only see anguish everywhere, everywhere, but they also see cages overflowing with feces when hygiene standards are flouted. So that's a compound complex sentence about suffering and the lack of hygiene in zoos. What about this one? As I wandered around the spacious site, my delight intensified for I was being transport, transported into a rainforest full of exotic animals. So that's a positive sentence about how zoos can take you into the Amazon, take you into an exotic place that you'd never be able to experience otherwise. You've got the subordinate clause at the beginning, as I wandered around the spacious site, and then two main clauses, my delight intensified, I was being transported into a rainforest. And then this one, clinging desperately to their mothers, baby mammals scream, yet the adult animals are powerless to help their young. You can see this is really intensifying that sense of pain and suffering that the, the, the animals experience in zoos. Clinging desperately to their mothers, you've got subordinate clause at the beginning, then you've got two main clauses connected by a coordinating connective. So just to recap really about this, this is for a specific assignment about zoos being cruel, animals being should be allowed to roam free and wild instead of being, um, being cooped up and used for public exhibition. Okay, so it's part of a speech. So in opinion writing, you're obviously giving your opinion. You can write for, you can write against, and I hope I've given you a balance of opinions for either side of the argument that you might use if you do your own writing. So remember that you can use single clause sentences, simple sentences that have um, a main verb and a main and one um, and one subject. That's a main clause. You can use compound sentences that are connected with. Co coordinating conjunctions and those coordinating conjunctions are fanboys. You can use complex sentences by adding um, subordinating conjunctions, relative clauses and participle verbs or if you want to use the most complex sentences you're using com main clauses and subordinating clauses together to really extend, develop 
and improve your ideas. So I hope that's helped with Year 11 Grammar for Writing Opinion Writing. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.